Okay, uh, welcome. This is my favorite session of the day, the last session, yes. It, uh, it seems like yesterday or the day before uh, that it actually started at nine o'clock this morning. But I'm gonna finish up the day with 11 things about 11G release two. Uh, the current release of the database was first put out for everyone to download on otn.oracle.com the beginning of September. And that was the Linux port that came out first. Uh, then in October, they took all of our developers away from Redwood Shores and sent them downtown to San Francisco for Oracle Open World. So no work got done. It was just the show. Uh, as soon as they got back though, they finished the port of 11G Release 2 to the Sun Solaris platform. That is now generally available with HPUX and AIX to follow very shortly. And Windows is, is slated to be out uh, either the end of this year or first quarter of calendar year 2010. So about by the first quarter of next year, uh, it will be on all of the platforms that we generally use. But what I'm gonna go through quickly are 11 things that as I was reading through, I looked at and said, this will be useful. This is something that I've been looking for. Some of them are small. Some of them are, are tiny. Uh, you wouldn't hear Larry Ellison talking about them on stage. Uh, the first one I'm gonna talk about, for example, is a feature he probably doesn't even know exists. Some of them are large. The, the last one I'm gonna close up with is what I think to be the killer new feature of 11G Release 2. Uh, if you needed one reason to consider looking at it, it would be this one feature. Uh, and the ones in between go up and down. Some of them are big, some of them are small, but we'll take a look at a couple. The first one is a way to take a SQL statement and execute it in small bite-sized pieces. Suppose you have a large table and you know you need to update every single record in that table. Your choices in the past have been issue a single update statement. Let it take 10 hours. And if it got nine and a half hours into it and failed, it would roll back and you'd lose all that work. You could use parallel query. Maybe do the update in two hours instead of 10 hours. But of course you would get one hour and 45 minutes of the way through it, fail, roll back, and lose that work. You could write a program, and I've described how to do this in the past, how to break a table up into small, non-overlapping pieces, and then using DBMS job or DBMS scheduler, you schedule the jobs to, to update this table in tiny bite-sized pieces. You write the audit trail for it so you know what parts have been done, which ones haven't, but it was very code intensive, very manual. They've made this in 11G release too, very easy. I sometimes think the Oracle developers who are writing the database read my book because they implemented it exactly the way I described to implement it uh, for 9i and 10g and so on. So let's take a look at, at how this would look. We'll hop over here into the database and I'm gonna create a table that I have the goal of modifying every single row. It's a batch process. It's some big update statement. I can do it in pieces. I don't have to do the entire table at once. I can do it in small bite-sized chunks, but I do need to make sure that it's restartable, that if we got halfway through and lost power, when the power comes back on, I can pick up where I left off. And that was the goal of this package, the, this new implementation, to make it safe to do this in pieces, but also make it easy. So I've got my table that I want to update, table T. I look in the data dictionary and I can see how big this table is. It's about a thousand blocks. I have decided I want to update no more than 10% of the table at a time. Every time I update 10%, data volume wise, I would like it to commit and then go on to the next 10%. So I'm gonna take this table and break it up into equal sized chunks of, of database blocks. And if I have a thousand blocks, divide that by 10 into 10 pieces, I want to update about 100 blocks at a time. So this is the information I have going into this. What I'm going to do is use this new package to create a task, the new package DBMS Parallel Execute, create a task, hey, I want to update table T. That's just my name. 
The table I want to update in the next line is uh, user.t. I want to create chunks by row ID ranges. I could either break the table up by row ID ranges, which is nice because that means that they'll be done in non-overlapping but contiguous sections, or I could break up the table by primary key. If your primary key is between 1 and 10, we'll update you. Between 11 and 20, we'll update you and so on. So I'm going to break it up by row ID. By row gets false. I could either break the table up into chunks based on the number of rows. If I had a million rows and I want to update 10%, I could say by rows gets true. Go ahead and update a million divided by 10 rows at a time. But I want to use blocks, so by row is false. And my chunk size is about 100 blocks. And what this has done is populated a data dictionary table for me uh, with all these chunks out there. I'm just showing you the first five but it's broken it up, put these row ID ranges into a table. Right now it has a status of unassigned. Nobody's working on it. I would now like to do an update against this. And literally all I have to do is pass in this update statement. I can pass in any SQL statement I want, including a call to a stored procedure. It will get the start and end inputs, the row IDs in this case, or the primary key range. And then all it's doing is updating the rows in that range. And it's used that table that it filled up to drive this process. So it went through and using two of those rows at a time. Remember, I broke the table up into at least 10 pieces, maybe more, because it's just going to go through and do the best that it can. But it's in at least 10 pieces, and I've asked it to do at most two at a time. So you could break the table up into 1,000 pieces and then proceed to execute five or 10 of them in parallel. The number of chunks you break the table into doesn't have to be the same as the degree of parallelism here. So it went in the background, updated them two at a time. If I look at that data dictionary table again, I can see that the, the chunks have been processed. If one of them had failed, instead of saying processed, it would say that there was an error. And then there's other columns to tell me what the error was. I could correct that, restart the process so that that range does get updated. Uh, but I know which ones have succeeded, which ones had failed, and I can use this view to monitor the progress of this job as it's running as well. I drop that task, and those rows go away. But this just makes doing what used to be fairly difficult now a standard sort of practice. Everybody can do this pretty easily. It just takes uh, a procedure call to create these chunks and another procedure call to actually schedule the job or run the job in your session. And then it happens in the background and the auditing's built in for you. Another one, some extensions to analytic functions. If you have not played with analytic functions inside the database, we introduced those way back in version 8i quite a few years ago, I would encourage you to take a look at them. They allow you to do things in SQL that were before just impossible to accomplish. And they've added a couple inside of 11G Release 2 that I thought were interesting. The first one was List Ag. Again, I think the developers read my book because way back in 9i Release 2, they gave us the ability to create our own user-defined aggregates. And in 9i Release 2, I wrote a function I called String Ag. And with String Ag, it would aggregate strings in the database. I could select Depno string ag of ename from emp group by Depno. And it would give me department 10 and a common delimited list of everybody who worked in there. And so there was this string ag, and, and people found this useful. But what they didn't like about it was with string ag, you had to install my PL SQL package, you had to install my function, you had to install my object type. There was a lot of code to install, and then you got this functionality. In 10G, they gave us another way to do it with some new connect by functions. I could use a magic function sysconnectbypath to get this result set, which was very similar to what StringAg did. But look at what you had to go through to do it. First, you had to go to the employee table, and then for each department, you had to sort it by employee name and assign a unique row number to it within the department. Then you had to do this connect by query to build all of the possible strings. And then you had to know how to use the aggregate to get exactly the one you wanted. 